All right, welcome to the EAL Course Vlog Rustic Canyon Edition Volume 2. This is the back nine of Rustic Canyon. If you missed the first video and you want to see what I shoot on the front nine, take a look here. All right, beautiful day at Rustic Canyon. The 10th hole is a wonderful par five. So we've got back to back par fives between the 9th and the 10th. 10th hole, you've basically got a fairway that runs out at about uh, 320 on the right from the back tees here. You can't see the fairway, so I'm basically looking. There's two towers out there. I'm looking at the one on the left with a bit of a draw. Unfortunately, since I'm not really a course vlogger, I didn't include the ball in this shot. And I hit a little block, which honestly, a block doesn't really bother me because I like coming from the inside. Unfortunately, I didn't close the club face and I would ultimately lose the ball in the environmentally sensitive area, which is red staked. So I'm taking a drop and I am lying three. Again, I did not include the golf ball in the frame of the shot. I am sorry. Gapper, nice, low, piercing draw. I mean, I'm miles away from the green, so I'm just trying to lay it up there. Fourth shot, I've got 127 and I've got a pitching wedge. 124. This green slopes heavily from back to front. So from here, it's left to right. Again, all the fairways and the greens are all tilted around. So nothing's really a direct angle. Hit a pretty bad shot here. Kind of overdrew it. Ended up pin high and again on this right through the clown's mouth and look at that slope on that green, take that ball very far away from the hole. Really a bad feeling after coming off of nine where I four putted a par five after getting on more or less in two. Pretty tragic. This is my bogey putt. I'm looking about two cups on the right, under Reddit and a tap in for double. So basically I am out of strokes if I want to shoot 80 and I've got eight holes to play, but confidence has never eluded me even in the most impossible of circumstances. The 11th hole, I really like this hole. It's very challenging. Um, off the tee again, the fairway basically dives left and then there's a tongue of waste area that comes out. So the line for me is right over the middle of that bunker with a little bit of a draw and Usually I end up hitting a good drive on this hole. Uh, it suits me well because it moves left. 452 from the tips. Hole 11, 8 over par. Absolutely roasted as you can see. Really got that club twisted around my neck in what will be in 10 years. A very painful move. The ball is unfortunately link style here this course. The ball is pretty much about two inches below my feet. I've got 157 in and also folks, if you're in need of a rangefinder, get ready for the random golf club rangefinder, which will be at randomgolfclub.com. Click the link over here to check it out. Coming in June. I've got an eight iron in my hands. So as would be expected here with the ball below my feet, I hit a wipey cut, yeah, very dissatisfying feeling, but drive. I caught it pure at least. So here you can see that ridge that runs along right behind the green, bisecting this green. And really, this is the place you want to miss. You don't really want to be overcooking it and going into the waste area on the left or long. But here is a challenging birdie try from off the green. I'm giving it about two feet on the right and just let it come down that hill. Not enough steam, bad read. I don't even know. All right, so par attempt here. You can see the ridge is going to affect this putt. I'm looking a ball on the left. And doesn't quite get there. Probably was left edge. Bogey. After some good par saves on the front, I am really making a mess of things on the back. 12th hole. This is a very interesting golf hole. 336 from the black tees. The green is secluded on the left behind that big tree. It's probably an oak tree, but I have no actual idea. The gentleman in my group talked me into hitting driver because, hey, what do I have to lose? I normally hit three iron or five wood on this hole and just kind of put it out there. The fairway's massive. There's no trouble. 
but I'm basically looking right of the tree with a draw. Absolutely piped it, pulled it a little bit, but it didn't overdraw. I don't know where it is at this point. Very delighted to walk up and see that basically the camera is between the tee box and the green and the flag. So you can see I'm just off the green putting for Eagle here, really trying to take this putt seriously. It's much easier than the putt I had on nine. Um, and this one, I think I give this putt about three feet on the left and it's severely downhill. Everything's breaking towards the gate and it looked good the whole way. Very proud of that. Unfortunately, I filmed the birdie putt in time-lapse mode because again, I was not taking this very seriously. I did make the birdie and it was very quick. It, it actually went by much slower than it would seem in this video. Left edge was the read. All right, another par five, 13th hole. All right, so you're seeing a still image here. This is the tee box. Unfortunately, I forgot to film my tee shot or I thought I pressed record, but I didn't. Either way, you can see that little pot bunker in the fairway up there on the left. I basically try to draw it off that because you got waste area on the right. So I'm just trying to sort of pull that ball left. I, you know, right is a better line into the green, but I don't like going up the right side on this hole because there's actual OB. Um, but again, I didn't film my tee shot, even though I absolutely roasted it, I promise. Pretty sure it was about 315. All right, so here I've got too much length to get home in two. Uh, again, from the blues, I'm saving 30 yards on this tee shot. So I usually get to the green in two from the blue tees. So here I'm just trying to get a five wood up there. You can see I'm basically looking right of all those bunkers there and just trying to draw it off to the left. The green has a pot bunker right in the middle front of it and a mound that kind of bisects the green again. So I'm just looking to get on the left side of the green so that I can kind of chip into Thanks. the mound rather Thanks. than over the mound. So I didn't quite draw it as much as I wanted to, but uh, as you can see, that pot bunker is right there. Luckily, this green has a nice backstop and I have 50 on the number, which is a very good number for me with my 58 degree high toe wedge. I'm looking to just get my hands over to nine o'clock and then pull the chain a little bit long really clipped it well and as you can see the ball bounces around the flag comes scoots forward and then starts zipping back and someone yells go in oh Ooh, i thought it was going to be an eagle that's about the only way i can make an eagle out here unfortunately i had to settle for a tap in birdie so that's birdie birdie on the back and we're back to one over par very happy about that start all right folks yeah. 14 this hole is where the black tees really separate from any other tees. They are about 60 yards longer than the blue tees. It's a 498 yard par four, and this is what they call a coyote leg hole. So you see the fairway there out in the distance, and the fairway literally turns at almost a 90 degree to me. So I'm basically looking over that bush just in front of the ball to the right, the green one, and hitting a draw. And I figured I'll just hit it as hard as I possibly can. So you can see my left foot turn out. I've got about 275 just to get to the fairway. And I wasn't sure if it even had enough because it was drawing so much. Luckily, it was, oh, look, a bunny. That's cute. Uh, luckily, it just got over all the bunker and all of the um, trash there. And here I have a six iron from 180. So a six iron is usually 185 for me. And this actually is a little bit up and into the wind, but I don't want to hit a five iron because I don't want to go long and I prefer to hit a full shot with mid irons. So the pin is over there, middle of the green. I hit a peach of a draw right there, just off the right side, drew in. And this is a situation where if the course was running a little firmer, a little faster, this would have rolled down and, and might've even rolled past the flag. Um, here you can see just uh, kind of held up on the fringe there. I've got about 15 feet Super downhill for birdie, and I'm looking at three in a row, folks. Why not make a turkey? Webb's out there filming. I gave it a little too much and just burned the edge. I really wanted that one. I would have been back to even, which would have been, I think, three in a row is the most I've ever had. So now we've got the challenging par putt. This is about five feet, a little bit longer than I like, and, you know, We've missed these in our lives, so not loving this putt, but just trying to think about left center here. Yeah. So it's a pretty straight putt, actually. It just kind of landed in on the left side there. Very happy with that par. Very, very happy with yeah, that. Saving the score. Eight, you know? 
So 15 is the first par three on the back side. It is really challenging. You're basically aiming up about 15 to 20 feet at that green. And the green is a three tiered green, much like 16 at Pasa Tiempo, the McKenzie gem in uh, Santa Cruz. So here I've got a nine iron and it's playing 135. So the pin is right in the middle. And you know, for me, the practice swings, I'm just trying to feel the uh, path of the club and just try to, you know, trace it, trace the club. This tee box, I don't love. It's not in the best condition and it's kind of on a mound. It's not the flattest tee box on the course, but good swing, kind of hit a fanny block cut. And, you know, it wasn't that aggressive because I was thinking of a draw, but ultimately it left me in a pretty good spot to uh, attempt birdie here. I was on the right tier. Another gentleman in our group landed about eight feet short of the flag and it rolls back down to 50 feet on the fringe. So here I had a really hard time reading this putt and um, I, it, it's funny cause it feels straight, but it looks like it breaks. So I just kind of went in between and ultimately, um, pulled the trigger and ultimately finished a little low of the hole there. But again, another great putt and another great hole. And I'll take these any day. I would much rather have a really challenging par than an easy birdie. That, that, that to me is why I play golf is I, I love those kind of I love those experiences of, of overcoming. And in fact, there's a stat on the PGA tour that I've heard about pros making more par putts of the same length than birdie putts. So I think that says something about our mentality on the golf course. All right. So to make this putt and stay at one over again, it's pretty obvious. This thing is moving left to right. The question is how much I just figured I'm uphill. I'll just drill it at the left edge. And just comes in the right center. So very happy with that par. And now we come to my least favorite hole on the course. It is handicap one, 16th, 479 downhill all the way. It is for some reason, I do, I, I have a very hard time hitting this fairway. And basically you can't see the fairway here at all, but there's basically a dark bush out there. The darkest bush on the right. I'm basically looking at that and just thinking draw or cut, whatever. And the shot was so bad that the camera fell over and I lost a ball to the left. It was a pull draw. And basically I was 25% of the 75% of us who lost a ball to the left in the native area. So take a drop here. I have here a very confusing shot because the green is like 50 feet below me and the winds in my face. I've got 190 and JM who went before me hit a six iron sailed the green. So I take a seven iron, I hit it really pure a little bit to the right and it didn't draw and I ended up long right of the green. Not a great shot by any means. And here I'm basically just trying to do damage control. Pretty unfortunate. It's looking very hard to make a bogey here. This is not a very easy up and down. Again, I have done a great job of filming by leaving the ball completely out of the shot. Um, but you can see this green is just a little plateau. Um, caught the ball a little thin and it rolled out uh, much more than I would have wanted. At this point for me, I'm, I'm a little tired and I'm, my, the wind is a little bit out of my sails because I was looking at one over and you know, this is not a birdie hole, but 17 is a birdie hole and 18 is a good par. So, you know, I was looking at maybe getting back to even and coming in with a 78. So, you know, not that that really got a hold of me here, but I was just exhausted from this hole. It was such a, it was sort of like multiple bad shots in a row. There's a quote that says, every golfer is two shots from going crazy. And this is me on this hole. Um, I don't get wildly animated anymore, but, you know, just misread the thing. I don't know how it breaks to the right, or maybe I pushed it here, but uh, tap in for double nonetheless and back to three over. So summon my spirits for the 17th hole. Uh, Webb is pretty excited because it looked like he was about to make a hole in one and he asked if I was filming, but I was not. Here I realized that I wasn't including the ball in the shot, so I went to wide mode on the old iPhone, which actually looks pretty good. It's a little harder to see the green. Again, you can't really see the green here. Um, it's, uh, it's down there on the left. 
and I'm looking at the middle of the green and maybe a bit of a cut here. Yeah, I've got 200 playing 190 and I hit a six iron. I hit it very flush, very high, and it cut just a tiny bit. Pretty sure that it was a good shot. Get to the green and I've got about 15 feet for birdie. I feel like I've got the read here. Again, this is another hard one to read because it, it looks level, but it feels like it breaks. So again, I basically underread it. And um, this is another example where I think the grain is moving to the west. So I think the grain pushed it a little bit and just burned the edge. That's the third or fourth edge I've burned today, but great putt and ultimately uh, relatively easy par. So three over, walking onto the 18th tee and um, looking at an 81 if everything goes well, an 80 if everything goes great. 18 is another one of these holes where no one really likes the tee shot here. There's a lot of trouble on the right. The hole kind of moves left to right, and you're kind of as a with a, with a with a draw. It really is interesting because every one of the holes at Rustic really demands a different tee shot. So some holes set up well for me with a draw, and some holes don't. 18 is one of the ones that does not. And you know, just trying to finish strong. 18 is usually, in theory, a good hole for me because I just don't leave anything in the bag and absolutely roasted this one. It's about a one yard draw. No pressure. And uh, 18's 456, and I'm coming in with a pitching wedge. So clocked at about 315 on this one. Very proud of that drive. Again, can't see the green, but you can see a lot of activity up there. The pin, you can kind of see waving just on the right edge of that bunker on the left. So I can see that the pin is actually in the channel. So I'm just trying to hit a shot that's gonna sort of end up 10 yards short of the flag in the channel. Nice, easy pitching wedge. Highest pitching wedge I've hit in years. Very high. I'm, I'm wondering if it's actually going to be bought by Elon Musk and put on a rocket. Um, very happy really with good. that shot. This green rolls severely uh, front to back, so this ball just ran away. And I've got about 35 feet for birdie. Um, I wouldn't say that's a misread. I mean, it is hard to read this putt. I mean, it, you're just in this channel. If you can see the the this, the edges of this putt are sort of going both ways. Obviously, it's influenced a little bit to the left, which I wouldn't have predicted because the gate technically is to the right, and left myself with a pretty reasonable putt for a par on 18 to make 81. A little nervous over this putt actually. A lot of people watching on the green there on the left on the practice putting green, but. Little tap in center cup, three over on the back. Thanks for watching my first course vlog, everybody. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Let me know if you want me to make more of these and uh, head over to Random Golf Club for more news and updates. See you in the showers.